Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Sweetcast. I'm Clint, and today I got an email from Marvel Subscriptions. They want to give me 50% off cover price in order for me to subscribe again to get comics. I did this a few years ago. This was back when uh, Superior Spider-Man was the thing, and I was getting that shipped to me, and it was convenient. In some ways, the books would sometimes be damaged when they got to me which wasn't great um but overall the experience was fine i would not consider going back now because i mean most the marvel creators hate me some of them have uh been very explicit about that online um they don't like their customers not unless you fit into their mold so i find it funny that they are also emailing me um trying to get me to come back so it's uh not something that interests me. So it did get me thinking about different distribution channels. And I saw a picture floating around on Twitter. And there has been some talk about a comic book vending machine. I never have heard of such a thing. Did not know it existed. Uh, but you Google it and there are definitely vending machines that have comic books. I imagine it's just a standard vending machine. And then they've, yeah, they changed the shelves or whatever they need to do to make room for it. And it looks like it would work fine. I'm not sure this is a great option for mass distribution of comic books. If you can sort of think about it a little bit, it would be very difficult to walk up to a vending machine and see the next issue that you need. Or, you know, they'd all have to be like number ones, I guess. I don't know. It would, wouldn't make a lot of sense to me in a practical way. Um, you would also not get a lot of return customers. You wouldn't be going... Uh, buying a comic book from a vending machine, coming back the next day, buying another one. Uh, it would just, it'd be so random. It'd be hard to find exactly what you need. I could be wrong there. I would love to see it work, but I do know that vending machines are really expensive to maintain. They're expensive to purchase. They're expensive to keep stocked, um, to fix all sorts of things. Uh, but I do like that, that mindset of being creative and thinking outside the box. So sometimes the most obvious way for distribution is the best way. Um, there, I've, I think getting comic books inside of a Walmart would be awesome. Getting distribution directly to customers locally is amazing. Um, however, there's a reason why online sales, retail sales are so great. And that's because online works. It's very convenient. You can find exactly what you need. And it's really cheap. The, the pro downside is shipping, of course. And then you also have to get your product in front of the customer. And yeah, that, that can also be very difficult. So walmart.com, you can apply and get your stuff sold on in Walmart. Technically, it's not in the store, but it's in their marketplace. And uh, yeah, that's a great option. I would certainly consider selling books at least in walmart.com as well as Amazon and really anywhere else you can sell them. Now, local sales are really important. You know, you're much more likely to make an impulse buy if you go to a store and you're faced with an item that you want and you feel like if you leave, you're going to leave without that item and you'll never get it again. There's, there's definitely something to be said for local sales. So having a point of sale in person, you can go, there's comic books, you can buy them. That would be amazing. I would love for comics to be in checkout stands in grocery stores. Again, the problem there is you'd have to have very accessible books. You'd have to have number one issues or just one shots or however you want to do that. It'd have to be something anybody could just go and buy and read. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more and possibly an idea I have for that, but in a minute. First, we're going to get to some other options, which are magazine uh, distributors. I think it would be a really interesting concept to skip Diamond or in addition to working with Diamond, working with a mag magazine distributor. The reason why this would be so great is because they get into checkout stands. They get people to get subscriptions to magazines. They're, they're getting to customers. So you could certainly work something out. Maybe you'd have to change the sizing. I'm not sure but you could certainly get into grocery stores by working through a magazine distributor. You could also get shipping and, you know, directly to customers 
who subscribe, which would be phenomenal. So something I would like to see explored more. I'm kind of surprised I've not seen any comic book myself that is being shipped through, you know, regular magazine distribution or in a store. So I have to say, I don't really look at magazines too often, so I could be wrong. Diamond distribution, we have got to talk about it because th- this is the conventional way that comic books are sold. It's very narrow. It's uh, not very friendly, um, but it, it works or it has been working for years. I think uh, individual comic book publishers, if you're creating your own imprint, a small imprint, and you've got one or two titles, for sure, I mean, it's going to be much more difficult to get into Diamond and get distribution than it is if we've created that comic book alliance or comic book coalition or whatever we're calling it, this large entity. But if you can get into Diamond, that's amazing. You can get through to comic book stores. However, I have to wonder, is part of the reason why comic book sales are are so bad just the natural shift? Technology changes things. If we look at Borders, for example, they couldn't keep up with the times. Borders went out of business. They sold books. A big reason why they, they went out of business is because they couldn't compete with Amazon. And I hear this uh, Time Magazine spells out a few reasons. It was too late to web. They were too late to sell things online. Sometimes the most obvious answer is the right answer. Selling online direct to customers works. There's a reason why. It, it's such a deadly sin not to do that, that it would put a giant retail book retailer out of business. So it was too late to ebooks. Ebooks are great. Um, personally, I don't, I've read a couple comics in ebook format. It's not my favorite. I, I love having print. So, but there's definitely an audience there for ebooks and that's actually an easy distribution route. Okay. Borders open too many stores. This is also definitely a problem. This is why I think about, go back to the vending machine concept. The vending machines are a massive expense. And so if you're investing your money into things like that hardware, I don't think it's wise. I would rather invest that money into marketing, rather invest that money into getting books printed or more titles or or whatever. There's a lot of other things that you could invest money into getting in-person sell point of sell locations. I don't think that's a wise investment. And that's if we look at borders, that was their problem. Borders also had too much debt. I don't think that would be a problem. Crowdfunding is working right now. Um, There's a lot of interest in comics. It's a a different thing. If you're not building brick and mortar stores, there shouldn't be a problem there as long as you handle handle your money wisely. And then it overinvested in music sales. That's interesting to me. They picked the wrong, they put all their money in the wrong baskets, basically. Um, So really focusing on what you do well and doing that the best, being the best at it. So whatever that ends up being, I think uh, the Comic Book Alliance would really have to just hone in on that. Okay, so I wanted to bring up one concept that I think could work or I might try myself. So the reason I bring this up is because I am have started to put the wheels in motion. I am going to be creating a comic book. I'm not going to put a timeline out there yet, um, but I'm try- I'm trying to understand what route I should go. What I'd love to do is write a six issue graphic novel. So it'd be about the length of six issues. Yeah. Cause that, that's the way I like to read. I love to read in trade paperbacks. I feel like it's just more satisfying to have a, a story that large. Um, and I'd, l- I'd love to do that. However, this would be my first uh, comic book publication. And so I'm not super confident in how that process would work. I realize getting an artist is very important. I've put out a call for artists and I've been looking at portfolios, but artists, uh, they cost a lot of money. They, they work a lot. And so, yeah, trying to find the right balance is hard. So I bring up free comic book day because I took my kids to free comic book day a couple years ago and we found a comic book. It was terrible lizard. It was the free comic book day one, but it was just issue number one. So we got that issue. We brought it home. Uh, we read it. My kids liked it. So we decided to look online and I found the trade paperback. We bought it and yeah, they enjoyed it. So I thought that process could be perfect. Having one issue that's your number one, that's your hook. That's going to get people into the comic. It's going to be, 
satisfying but still lead lead you the reader to want to read more if you focused on issues number issue number one you could sell those in magazine racks or wherever those are the single issues you print and then if people want more there's information in the book they can go directly and buy the trade paperback so the re I'm, I'm considering this because i'm trying to decide if i should commission an artist and go for the full graphic novel or if I should do the first issue, first chapter of that graphic novel, get it printed, and if people like it, then we do the full we do the full thing. Um, I'm not sure what the best route to go is. Honestly, I'd love to talk to somebody who has successfully crowdfunded a comic book, and I would like to pick their brain and ask them what they wish they would have done, what they, you know, would have done differently. Um, I've done a crowdfunding campaign before for something very different and uh, it was miserable. I hated it. I don't really want to do a crowdfunding campaign again. However, I'm not sure any better way to publish a comic right now. So I'd like to know your thoughts. What do you think about this concept of doing one issue and then that leading into a full trade paperback? Or am I going about this wrong? Should I just go straight for the graphic novel? or do single issues all the way through. Uh, let me know in the comments below, and I will see you next time.